Yo guys, I want to say welcome back to another video. So today, what I've got for you is I'm going to be ranking every single League One team's fans from my personal experience of the 2018-19 season. Now in this video, I'm going to be ranking every team's away fans that came to Bloomfield Road last season using a website called Tier List or Tier Maker. Most of you will have heard of it. Now just before we get into this video, please don't get offended if I place your team lower than you believe they should be. Like I say, it's just based off my personal experience, so feel free to debate in the comments below. And some factors can come into place, like some of the games on a Tuesday night, so some teams' atmospheres weren't the best. Obviously, being on a Tuesday night means they bring less fans as the game's later and harder to get to, etc. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, as you can see here, I'm on the Tier Maker website. And if I keep looking down, it's because I'm looking at it on my phone. Now, I've set up a few different categories for this video with class at the top, which is the best category for the best fans, good, decent, meh, and awful. So like I say, please don't get offended where I put your club. Feel free to debate in the comments below. I've actually made this a template on the website. If you type in EFL League One fans, feel free to use it. So how this video is gonna work, I'm gonna go through three teams at a time instead of going by one individually. Otherwise this video would be far too long and you know, just keep it short and sweet for you guys. So the first three teams I have selected for this tier list maker are AFC Wimbledon, Plymouth Argyle and Rochdale. Now starting with Wimbledon and Rochdale, I've chosen to put them both in the meh category. Now firstly, I've chosen to put Wimbledon there because it is a long way. They did bring, you know, a decent amount for the distance that Wimbledon is. I'll leave a few pictures on screen throughout this. Same goes for Rochdale really. Both brought a decent amount. I thought Rochdale could have brought a little bit more. However, despite bringing a decent amount of fans, neither of the two sides were particularly loud in their respective games. So that's why I put them both in meh. Now, moving on, the first team in the good section has to be Plymouth Argyle. Their fans are extremely loud when we played them at home. We we're both going back and forth with each other, the Blackpool fans and the Plymouth fans. Really good atmosphere between the two sets of fans that game. You know, a good bunch of Plymouth fans. There's a good five or 600 of them considering, you know, very, very far down south, so fair play to them. So that's why they're going in good. So the next three teams I have chosen for this video are Barnsley, Bristol Rovers and Sunderland. Now starting with Bristol Rovers, I've decided to place them in the decent category. Now it's a very similar principle to Wimbledon and Rochdale who I put in the meh category just below them. Bristol Rovers bring in a similar amount of numbers to those two sides, maybe more than AFC Wimbledon just about. But Rovers did make a lot more noise than the other two clubs, I have to admit. Maybe it's due to the fact that they did win 3-0, I'm not sure. But like I say, they did make a lot more noise than the other two clubs. That's why I put them in the category just above them. Not enough to warrant them to be in the good or the class, but decent, I'd say, is fair for them. I've decided to put both of the next two teams in the class category, those teams being Barnsley and Sunderland. Now, starting with Barnsley... They were absolutely electric all game. I'm pretty sure they did win 1 or 2 nil against us. It might have been 1 nil if I can remember correctly. They're extremely loud with the EI, EI, EIO chant after going 1 nil up. And, you know, they were just electric all game. They filled the whole stand behind the goal. Absolutely amazing atmosphere. So, for that reason, I've put them in class. Along with Sunderland, this one does not really need an explanation, does it? Bringing nearly 8,000 fans to Bloomfield Road. The most away fans we've seen in a long, long, long time at Bloomfield Road. And they were absolutely electric around the whole ground. You know, most of the fans in the stadium singing, stood up all game. Brilliant atmosphere from Sunderland. So that's why I've also put them in class. So moving on, this is quite a controversial one, but I've decided to put Luton Town in the class section. Now this is simply because of the sheer amount of fans they brought to Bloomfield Road, filling out the whole of the North Stand behind the goal. It's an extremely long trip from Luton, so fair play to them, quality support. They did sing, but nowhere near as much as Barnsley or Sunderland, but I decided to put them in the class category for simply the great away following. And to be fair, they were still quite loud, but not as loud as the other sides. But yeah, amazing away following from Luton. So that's why I've decided to put them in class. Next up, we have Shrewsbury Town. Now, I've decided to put them in the meh category. Again, exactly the same as Rochdale and AFC Wimbledon. Similar amount of fans, although didn't really sing throughout the whole game. Now, this is quite surprising for me because a couple of seasons ago, they did sell out that whole stand behind the goal. 
but I'm sure that's when they were pushing for promotion and this season they are more of a mid-table side. So yeah, I've decided to put Shrewsbury in meh for that reason. And finally, the first team in the awful category is Southend United. Now, a quick disclaimer, I do not think Southend fans are bad or anything. It's just on the day we could not hear them whatsoever. And it was that quiet that I couldn't even hear them when they scored. Now, that was not down to Southend fans being awful. That was just down to Blackpool fans singing throughout the entire match. Obviously, with it being the homecoming fixture. Although, to be fair, there were not a lot of Southend fans with it being a long way, which is understandable. But the fact that I didn't even hear the cheer of the South End goal is why I've put them in awful. As our next three teams, we have Bradford City, Oxford United and Doncaster Rovers. Now starting with Bradford City, I've also chosen to put them in the class section because of simply the sheer amount of fans they brought and how loud they were throughout the entire game. Again, near enough selling out that whole north stand behind the goal when that was the away end. They were extremely loud throughout the entire game, I must admit going 2-0 up, only for us to turn it around and win 3-2 with around 10 minutes remaining, which is an absolutely amazing comeback. I still don't know how we did that to this day. But yeah, Bradford fans, great following and extremely loud. So they are another team in the class set. <laughs> So our second team in the decent section is going to be Oxford United, again with Bristol Rovers and Rochdale Wimbledon. Similar amount of following again for this side, but like Bristol Rovers, Oxford deserve to be in the decent section because to be fair, they were quite loud during the game, especially when they scored. Not enough for them to warrant a place in a section above, but you know, they were still quite loud along with Bristol Rovers, so they joined them in the decent section. And next up we have Doncaster Rovers who I have put in the mess section. Normally a great set of fans, Doncaster, who travel in their numbers, but with this being a Tuesday night fixture, it's understandable that there weren't a lot of Doncaster fans. And to be fair, they were quiet throughout pretty much the entire game, apart from when they scored, we heard them cheer. But the fact it's a Tuesday night is one of the only reasons they're in meh, because they would have brought a lot more, and I reckon they would have been higher up. But because of that, they're in the meh section. The next three teams I've selected are Scunthorpe, Gillingham and Fleetwood. I've decided to put Scunthorpe and Gillingham both in the meh section, both for different reasons. Scunthorpe's was mainly because it was a Tuesday night fixture, therefore they were not that loud and there was not many fans, which you could say is not their club's fault. If it was a Saturday, I reckon they would have been a lot louder and you know, a lot higher in the category, but unfortunately it's a Tuesday night, the atmosphere is never the best. And the reason for me putting Gillingham there is because they were 3-0 up inside around half an hour and yet we still couldn't really hear them until full time. They were not that loud. If your club was 3-0 up before half time, you'd think the atmosphere would be slightly better and you'd be buzzing. But again, this is just my opinion, so feel free to debate in the comment section below. Moving on, I've decided to put Fleetwood Town in the good section, which is the second best category. Now, I've chosen to do this because their fans were a lot, lot louder than their previous visit a couple of seasons ago. You know, Pyros when they scored, a great atmosphere to be fair from Fleetwood. Both sets of fans had a great atmosphere, especially on North Stand. And the Fleetwood away end was quite loud throughout the whole 90 minutes, to be fair. A disappointing figure, really, from Fleetwood. Only just over a 1,000 fans. But fair play to the ones that came because, you know, they were quite loud throughout the game. So I decided to put them just around there with Plymouth. They probably were slightly better than Plymouth, but there was more Fleetwood fans. I don't think they warrant a place in class, but definitely a solid position in good. Next up, I've got two more teams to add to the Mech category. And those are Charlton Athletic and Burton Albion. Now, similar to most of the other teams in here, not a huge amount of fans, which is obviously understandable for these clubs because especially Charlton is quite far away in London. They would be one higher if they just made a little bit more noise. I know chanting is not for everyone at games and some people like to sit down, but I am ranking the fans in this video, so unfortunately I'm going to have to put them both in meh. And just above them in decent, I've decided to add Warsaw. A similar amount of fans to Burton and Charlton, but Warsaw were just that tiny bit louder you know, chanting throughout the game despite losing, so I've decided to put Warsaw in decent. Another team to add to the awful category is unfortunately going to be Wickham Wanderers. Now this is because this was a Tuesday night fixture. Fair play to every single Wickham fan that made the trip to Bloomfield Road. The absolute mammoth journey from, you know, High Wickham down to Bloomfield Road. Couldn't imagine how long that must have taken, but fair play to every single one that made it. But unfortunately, there was not many of them. I think it was just over 100. So unfortunately, they do have to go in awful because obviously they didn't sing as well. Being a Tuesday night game, the atmosphere was pretty dead. 
So unfortunately, I'm going to have to put them in awful. Like I say, fair play to every Wiccan fan that made the game. Next up, I've got Peterborough United and Portsmouth. Starting with Peterborough, I've put them in a the decent category. There wasn't a huge amount of Peterborough fans, but to be fair, they did make noise when they scored. And certainly, mainly towards the end of the game is the reason I put them in this category and not one below. They were quite loud towards the end, you know, because it was a big win for them. They were in the push for playoffs. Fortunately for them, they didn't finish in a playoff position, but they got very close and this is a huge win for them. Their fans were quite loud towards the end, to be fair. So I've decided to put them in decent. And finally, Portsmouth, I have put in class. Their fans were absolutely unbelievable at Bloomfield Road. The first away game of the season for them. Chanting non-stop throughout the entire match. Some of the best fans I've seen at Bloomfield Road in many, many years. Fair play to Portsmouth. They did win 2-1 or 2-0, I believe it was. Two goals from Ronan Curtis on that day. But yeah, they were very, very loud that game. So that's why I put them in class. <laughs> Another team to add to the good section is going to be Accrington Stanley. Stanley did actually bring a decent away following to Bloomfield Road. They were decently loud throughout the game and did set off pyros after scoring. And, you know, they were chanting right near the end after getting that last minute equaliser. So, to be fair to Stanley, I'm going to put them in good. <laughs> Final team for this tier list video, sorry if you're a Coventry fan, you've had to wait all the way till the end, but it'll be definitely worth it because I'm going to put you in the class section. Now this was a Tuesday night and Coventry did bring over a thousand fans to Bloomfield Road, electric throughout that whole game, despite the fact they did lose and I'm pretty sure they didn't even score that game. I'm sure it was 2-0, but their fans were really loud throughout the whole game. Fair play to them, it is a long trip on a Tuesday night. They're known for having quite good fans anyway, so that's why I've put them in the class section. So that is it for my opinion on the League One fans that came to Bloomfield Road last season. Let me know if you'd change anything. Like I say, this is my personal opinion. If we go through it quickly, in the awful section, I've gone with Southend and Wickham. Met, I've gone with Shrewsbury, Rochdale, Wimbledon, Doncaster, Scunthorpe, Charlton, Gillingham and Burton. Decent, I've gone with Bristol Rovers, Oxford, Warsaw, Peterborough. Good, Plymouth, Fleetwood and Accrington. And class, Barnsley, Sunderland, Luton, Bradford, Portsmouth and Coventry. So that's going to be the end of the video. If you have enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.